um, before we start the uh, Christmas video, I just want to make a little bit of an announcement. Obviously this year, um, most people, uh, most Disney fans, have been celebrating a very special birthday, which is of course Mickey Mouse's 90th birthday. Um, and one of and one of the YouTubers I, I am subscribed to is um, Disney Dave Down Under, or Dave Down Under. And he's done a really great celebration um, with many different fans and other YouTubers. And you might even see that I'm in that video as well. And I just want to let people know, and I'll send the link uh, below this video, um, just to share the celebration of Mickey Mouse's 90th birthday. Um, with that said, on with the video! As we grow older, we have those moments, especially during the holidays, where we remember what we had as children and that we took them for granted. And then we suddenly realised how much fun they brought us, even though we threw them out or our parents threw them out, and now we want them back mostly now that we're getting older. Because life can suck that way, can't it? But we can't ignore what is being presented to children nowadays, including Disney and their interactive studios. What was better for a kid who grew up watching Disney movies and loved the characters and environments they inhabited? Well, actually being the characters in the environments they inhabited. Enter the Walt Disney Computer Software Disney Interactive Bruno Vista Games? Disney Interactive Studio? Good lord, how many titles did they go through? Regardless of what it was called, they did leave a strange nostalgic feel, and I think they should be looked at for the Christmas season. Now obviously I can't go through all of them as, you know, Disney is such a big universe, so I'll go through certain platforms, one that I've personally experienced, or even some that have become popular over the years. So sit down everyone as we go through the Disney Interactive Games. Enjoy! Let's start with a platform that was perfect for kids in the back of a car, in the back of a train, or on a plane, anywhere, just to keep them entertained. We're going to start off with the Game Boy Advance or DS. It's most likely that you'll remember the pixelated characters with a strange sounding version of the movie's soundtrack. But looking back, I actually forgot how many there were. It ranged from Mickey Mouse to princesses to Pixar and even Disney Channel shows. Yes, people, I remember I had the Lizzie McGuire game, as well as Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, Toy Story 2, Monsters, Inc., 102 Dalmatians, Alice in Wonderland, Jungle Book, Tarzan, Lion King, Finding Nemo, Lilo and Stitch. And those games all had one thing in common. How difficult they were! I cannot tell you the number of times I have died in these games that I haven't even finished two-thirds of them. I only remember completing Beauty and the Beast, Alice in Wonderland, Lion King, Finding Nemo. And the one game that I think was my personal favourite growing up, The Disney Princesses. While it had the same format as the other games, it did manage to feel different with every princess. Playing as Snow White, Belle, Aurora, Cinderella, Ariel, and Jasmine, the main goal is for each princess to rescue their friends, so Snow White would save the dwarfs, Belle the enchanted objects, etc. And each one gets a certain weapon, so Aurora would get a wand, Ariel the magic trident, etc. Each one goes through three chapters, with the last one defeating the villains from the movie. The only exception is Cinderella, who only had two chapters, which is the main story. So the first involves doing chores until the time runs out and then having a dance off against the stepsisters. I think the reason why this game stood out to me was because each princess and their surroundings are different and clearly distinct. It reminded me of how unique they are in the films in terms of design. You could show the backgrounds without any characters, and you could tell which one's which, and the game does that too. And so, and since it consists of six movies, it makes it feel different throughout when you play it. Now we're on to the PC games, and yes, there's a lot of them, but again, I'll touch upon the ones that I've experienced through my childhood. Obviously, loving the Disney princesses, I had a few designing games, with some that were pretty forgettable and some that had some charm to it, like Cinderella's dollhouse. A chance to be creative while interacting with your favourite characters. One of the PC games that stood out to me most as a kid was the Disney Storybook Interactive Games. They are pretty much what they sound like. 
You go through the story of an animated feature and the player interacts with the scenes along with extra activities including puzzles, sing-alongs and colouring. Vice President of the Entertainment Division for Disney Interactive wanted the animation to be done by actual Disney animators. So, for the first release, being The Lion King, where 5,000 out of 12,000 frames of animation was done by Disney animators. The later games involved the films 101 Dalmatians, Pocahontas, Winnie the Pooh, Hunchback of Notre Dame, Toy Story, Mulan, and The Little Mermaid. Little Mermaid was a little different, and this might be why this was my personal favourite. Marketing director Joseph Adney stated that he wanted to go beyond the movie by making it feel like the player is directing it, which is something that I noticed as a kid. With the other games, there were moments that happened, but not much within the story that moved it forward. The player would click on hotspots for fun and then carry on to the next scene. Little Mermaid, on the other hand, made some moments in the story happen within the scenes. Example can be in the very first one, with Ariel and Flounder in the shipwreck. The player could just have Ariel collecting treasures, or they could trigger the moment when the shark attacks. Same as the kiss the girl scene. Players could click on the animal singing and move on, or they could trigger the moment where Ursula steals Ariel's voice to hypnotize Eric. So really, the player has to contribute to something in order to get the full story of The Little Mermaid. But even with that, the interactive story books did a good job involving the kids in the movies, so it'll have a place in my childhood memories. Now when we come back from a little break, we'll be looking at more recent games that Disney have to offer. And I'll admit, some of them I haven't played, but I feel like it's worth mentioning them. So I'll see you in a little bit. Hey guys, it's Anna here, and I thought I'd show you something very special that has just been released. It's a brand new collection, it's limited, so get your hands on it as soon as you can. And I thought it'd be the perfect time to show you because not only is it Christmas, and because it's Mickey's 90th birthday, but also because it is Walt Disney's birthday. And this is the Disney Classics Collection from 1937 to 2018. This is such a special collection and I highly recommend it to any Disney fan because of the amount of contact in here. As you can see, it looks like a sweet little fairy tale book with Mickey Mouse as Steamboat Willie on the front, of course. But inside is basically every single Disney animated classic that has been released up until 2018. So of course we start with Snow White, and then Pinocchio, Fantasia, Dumbo, and of course all the DVDs are on here. And it just keeps going and going and going. So yeah, this is just a really, really special collection. It's really, really good for space, I'll tell you that right now. And it's just so beautifully made. And, oh look, there's me! <laughs> and I just thought I would really would show you with you guys because I think this is such a special collection, for such a special year for Disney fans. And as well as the entire collection of the DVDs, there it also comes with a book, which is the course on history um, of the Disney Animation Studios. I do have a bigger version of this myself, which is um, which focuses on not just the animated classics, but Disney, the live action, and video games, and the parks, of course. But this one primarily focuses on the animated films. So of course you've got the little timelines, the beginning of the studio, of course Snow White, so I really really love this book as well so I highly recommend it to any Disney fan and also as it's just come out as well in the UK I highly recommend you go and see Wreck-It Ralph Breaks the Internet I saw it a couple of nights ago and it was really good because it stars me and a lot of my other Disney princess friends and we were we were so good in that I, I was really happy with that and the rest of the movie is so good so enjoyable so imaginative so I highly recommend you go and see it but yeah I think I will go back to the video now uh, and leave Alex to it. Anyway, I gotta go. I got a movie night with the girls, so bye! Now, I'm gonna briefly talk about two games that I haven't played yet, but I feel like it's important to touch upon. So the first one is being 
Kingdom Hearts. A very different kind of game series with an unusual crossover between Disney and Final Fantasy. From what I gather, it centers around a boy named Zoro who obtains a keyblade and is separated from his friends and the destiny and run into Goofy and Donald. The three of them travel to different worlds relating to Disney movies and protect the characters from creatures known as the Heartless. Oh, there is way more detail in these games, but the idea came from Square Enix producers who wanted to do freedom movement in different dimensions inspired by Super Mario 64. However, the only characters they thought that were more popular than Mario was Disney. Disney gave Square Enix the freedom of characters, but they wanted to make sure that their personalities and worlds were still the same, and knew that their characteristics would help the game stand out. It obviously worked, as on its release in 2014, it became part of the top three highest selling video games, selling over 20 million copies worldwide. And with Kingdom Hearts 3 coming out in 2019, it's sure to keep players invested and excited. The other game I want to briefly mention is Disney Infinity. Like I said at the beginning of the video, what's more fun for Disney fans than to play that as their favourite characters in the worlds that surround them? Well, Disney Infinity provides that and goes even further. As John Lasseter quoted, if you can think it, you can create it. And this came with two modes for the game called Playset and Toybox. Playset connects to each character's world. So, for example, if you had Jack Sparrow, you would play in the Pirates of the Caribbean world for a story. Toy Box, however, lets the players create their own worlds and stories, interacting with many other characters. And it's not just Disney animated features, but Pixar and Marvel and Star Wars. And while it's not around that much anymore, you can't ignore the ambition it had and that the designers were encouraging fans to be creative, which provided endless possibilities two games that I have played and this is one that I'm going to talk about that I feel like is very very important for Disney fans despite that it has many flaws. This is Epic Mickey. Yes, I'll be honest. If I was going to judge this game strictly on gameplay, then I probably wouldn't even recommend it. With the camera angles, the impossible boss battles, and the fact that it has subtitles, even though these characters clearly have voices attached to them. But what really sells it for me, and why I strongly recommend you play it at least once, is the story. Yep, the story in a video game is the best element of Epic Mickey. Why? Because it goes into a part of Disney history that not many people know about. The fact that before Mickey Mouse was born, Walt Disney had created another character called Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, which was popular around the time. However, because of a disagreement between Walt and his distributor at the time, Charles Mint, he left Oswald due to copyrights and began independently creating Mickey Mouse, and... You all know what happened after that. So, what happened to Oswald and the other characters that were created in the older days of Disney? This is where I think Mickey comes in. The story centers around Mickey Mouse entering a small version of Disneyland with inhabitants from classic Disney cartoons that have been forgotten, with Oswald being the replacement for Mickey. The two, of course, are not on good terms as a disaster has happened controlled by the Shadow Blot. Mickey goes through the different locations of the park, including versions of the Haunted Mansion, Parts of the Caribbean, and Tomorrowland. There are some characters that might be known, such as Clarabelle Cow, Horace Horsecollar, and the Lon Lonesome Ghost. But again, what really sells it is the story. Not only is it fun to recognise the older cartoons, but it's great to have these forgotten characters in a game and show the importance of them in Disney history. It actually has very emotional moments for a Disney fan, especially one involving the partner statue. So I guess if you're a huge Disney fan who wants to know more of the history, as well as gaining an appreciation for older characters, as well as Disney cartoons in general, then I strongly recommend Epic Mickey. The story, the world, and characters is worth going through it, despite the gameplay issues. Now, before I go on to talk about the last game, I'm going to give you some honourable mentions.
told you that there was a game where you can be a kid and go off to Disneyland and explore everything, characters, rides, parades, fireworks, etc. Well, there is a game that exists that provides just that. This is Disneyland Adventures. This is definitely one of my personal favorite games, not just because I'm a Disney fan of the animated movies and Pixar, but because I am growing a love for the parks. After watching many videos of the park in California, the game is pretty close to accuracy. By creating an avatar, you can get to explore the park by helping many characters find plenty of secrets and go on various rides from Splash Mountain to Jungle Cruise, from It's a Small World to Space Mountain. Each one does try to capture the rides which anyone familiar would be able to recognize. For example, the Jungle Cruise includes the corny puns from the ride, while the Haunted Mansion has the ghost host quoting lines from the ride. I think it's my favorite not only as a fan of the movies and the parks, but mostly because there is so much to do. And it just has this charm that makes you feel like you're a kid again. And that's partly what Disney movies and the parks do, so it captures the spirit and the magic of Disney. Definitely worth the recommendation. My holiday video on Disney Interactive Studios, and hopefully this might have given you some recommendations, or it might have given you memories from your own games that you had as a child. Be great to find out so leave comments below and um, that's all for me thank you for watching and i hope you have a merry christmas bye